All right, so in the last video, and this uh, this video is a direct uh, follow-up to the last video. So if you haven't seen the last video, uh, you need to go see it. The link is in the description. So in the last video, we went into three crucial attributes of the form element. We took a look at the on submit, which tells the form what to do when the user clicks submit. We took a look at the action attribute, which tells the form where to go after the data has been submitted. And then most of the, or the bulk of the last video was on this method attribute. And this told the form how to submit the data. Now we learned there were two main methods to submitting form submitting the data. That get was the default method and get used key value pairs and submitted these key value pairs in a query string in the URL. And that post used these exact same key values but instead of it transmitting through the URL, it transmits it through the body of the request object. And these are the same key value pairs here. Now, at the end of the last video, I told you that it wasn't all for naught, but that this is not how we solved the problem here. And the point of full stack development with a JavaScript was to use JavaScript. And so this solution here, this method action on submit, this is like 95% HTML barring this handle form submit all of this. this is an HTML solution for this problem so the video this video is going to be how do we use JavaScript to intercept inject or hijack or provide the exact same functionality as the method the action and the on submit and so we don't even really need all this let's delete this so what we're gonna do is we are gonna capture this form node. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I think two videos ago I talked about the DOM, watch that one. So we're going to capture this form node. We're going to give it a unique ID right now. Let's give it the ID uh, user submission form. And so I'm going to take you through how do we use JavaScript to replace the on submit? How do we use JavaScript to replace the action? How do we use JavaScript to replace the method? And so let's capture this. So right when the page loads, we're not going to wait for the user to click submit. Right when it loads, we're going to capture that that uh, form node. Const, we'll just say user form is equal to document dot get element by ID and what ID did I give it? User, uh, say user submission form. So user submission form. User submission form. Alright, so we captured it. Now we're going to replace the the on submit HTML solution for a form. And we do that with an add event listener. Now, what an add event listener does is, I don't think it's technically called a process, but it adds a process to the, uh, to the, uh, the form that you're, uh, that you're attaching, or any sort of element that you're attaching this listener to. And this listener listens for events and then it triggers a, a function. We call that a callback function. So just write it out here. So we're gonna add an event listener. We're gonna call a method called add event listener. And this takes two arguments. The first argument is a string of the event, and the second argument is a callback function. Now, a callback function is, I think I explained it in a few videos back, but all callback function is, it's basically set it and forget it, asynchronous programming. So we load a function in here. When this event gets triggered, add event listener will run this function for us, so we don't have to explicitly run it ourselves. This is how JavaScript, one of the ways it asynchronously programs. And so the first parameter, event, we're going to listen for a submit event. Now, there are many different types of events. We can listen for clicks, double clicks, uh, mouse hovers, drag and drops, but we're going to listen for a submit. Now, once the listener sees that we've submitted, it's going to call back the callback function. Now, we can write the callback function in the parameter. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Or we can load in a, a, an already written function, which is what we're going to do since we already have this guy written. We're going to load him up. So let me stop talking. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And so again, this JavaScript solution replaces the on submit solution, the on submit attribute. So what we're going to do is take the node. We're going to call the add event listener. The first argument we're uh, listening for is a submit event. And the second is a callback function. So we just load our function in here. And again, we could write the function in here like this. Function. It'd be called, you call this an anonymous function. There's no name to this function. And then we write all the JavaScript in here. But since we already have the function written for us from the previous videos, we're just going to load that one up here. So that guy was called handle form submit. And so now we go back to the page and we refresh. When we click the submit, 
the add event listener will see that we triggered the submit event and then it'll call the handle form submit. And again, this is replacing the on submit attribute. This is the JavaScript solution for this guy. So let's click submit and look at that. We get this, uh, this green and blue. If you watched the last video, the link is in the description, you know exactly what's happening. Why is it going from green to blue? The code says stay green. Why isn't it staying green? Again, if you've watched the last video, you know that when we click the submit button, the default action for the form is to refresh the page. So our code's working, it's turning green, but since it refreshes the page, the default color of this username is blue. And so the solution we came up with in the last video was an HTML solution. We use the action attribute to anchor the page. So instead of refreshing, it just redirected to the same page. Now let's do a JavaScript solution for that. All right, so this is gonna be a bit confusing for the new developers. But when you write a method like this and a method takes a callback, implicitly, there's an object being sent to the callback function. We call this the event object. So this is implied right now. Let's do it explicitly. So what's happening for this handle form submit is this. You're getting an event object and it's being passed into the callback function. Now this syntax might be new to you. This is called arrow function syntax. I'll explain it in a second. So this is what's happening. This is what's happening behind the scenes, but JavaScript, with JavaScript, we don't have to explicitly state it like this. And so this is an arrow function. I'm not gonna explain it like 100% in depth here, but all that arrow function is, is a rewritten function. And so, so we have a function. This is the normal way of writing a function or the old way of writing a function. And arrow syntax gives you some functionality, but again, we're not gonna get into that. So we'll say function bop, uh, parentheses for the parameters, and then the function code. That is the equivalent of this guy. Uh, bop is equal to parameters, arrow, and then the block. And so that's what this is doing. This method, add event listener, is implicitly giving our handle form submit an event object. And with the event object, we can prevent the page from refreshing. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, in JavaScript, you don't need to explicitly say this, it's applied. So delete that. We need that parentheses. Delete all this. All right. And now again, it's implied that it's in, that's an X, it's an H. It's implied that it's being passed in as a, an argument. So event object. And this is going to replace the action is equal to a hashtag, like that. And delete that guy. Let's get more space. And so in the event object, there's a method called prevent default. This prevents the default behavior of the form, which is refreshing the page. So now we've replaced the on submit and then we've replaced the action. Let's see what happens with our form. Now we're going to click submit. It stays green. Let's move on to replacing the method. Uh, attribute with the JavaScript. All right, so in order to uh, in order to uh, show you guys this, what we're going to do is we're going to take any value the user puts in these input fields, and we're just going to show them, display them right behind here. So we've already captured this username blue right here. What I'm about to do is capture this username pin red, and I'm going to capture these two input fields. So let's go ahead and do that. So once the user clicks submit event, it's going to run our handle form submit. Our handle form submit is going to prevent the default action, which is refreshing. And then I'm going to capture some nodes. So let's capture the user pin number red. So user pin uh, num. And we'll just say document get element by ID. And this guy's ID is user pin num. User pin num. All right, let's capture the two uh, inputs. So const user input name again document dot get element by id if you don't know what i'm doing with the dom two videos ago get element by id this id is username and now let's capture the pin number const user input uh it's a pin so you can document get element id and his was pin all right so we're set up here we've captured the two input boxes and we captured the two spans now in a span, or any sort of HTML element, let me show you. Let's go look at the HTML tree here. So any element that has an opening and closing tag has a property called text content. 
and that property holds the text content of the of the uh, the element. So our span guys have a property text element. In the text element, there's username colon and username pin number colon. What we're going to do is we're going to take the data entered by the user and we're just going to append it to the string. So it should say username, whatever username we, we plug in, user pin number, whatever number we plug in. Now, to get the uh, the data from an input field, you don't use text content. You use a property called value. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So let's, uh, I wonder if we should do this. Yeah, let's do it like this. Okay, so when they click the submit, our user name, which is this blue guy here, user name, his text content, we're gonna append, so plus equals, to the value of the user input name. And that's the value the user enters. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing with the user pin number. So user, is it user pin num? Yeah, user pin num dot text content, plus equals, if we just did equals, it would rewrite all of this, and you'd lose username and you'd lose user pin number. So with these are uh, plus equals here, and this is user input pin dot value. Now we've just replaced. Let me go ahead and explicitly say that. We could say replace method the HTML solution for this form. And since we captured the value, we can manipulate this data any way we want. Default is key uh, key value pairs, what the uh, the HTML does. We can do arrays, we can do strings, however we want. Because we captured the uh, the data here, we're free to do exactly whatever we want. And so let's submit some data. Rex, 55. Uh, let's go 555. Now what happens is it will trigger the event, submit, and it runs, runs our handle form submit. This replaces the on submit. It goes up here, uses the event object to pre prevent the page from refreshing. This replaces the action attribute. And then finally, we capture the data here, here, and here. And we get to manipulate the data where, however we want. And this replaces the method attribute. And so when I submit, we get change the username style to green, input the or append the value entered in username to username and append the value entered in pin number into the pin number. And so that's gonna be it for this video, guys. The last video, I showed you the HTML solution to this, the form attributes um, on submit, action, and method. And in this video, I showed you how to hijack that process with HT or JavaScript. And so we use add event listener for on submit. We use event.prevent default for action. And then we capture the values and do whatever we want with the values. And that replaces the, uh, the method, method uh, attribute. So like always, give a like, um, share the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe already if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, leave a thumbs up, whichever platform you're watching this one on. And I will see you guys in the next one.